And this is Mission Control Houston. So it's a it's a very well known fact that exercise down here on Earth can uh, go a long way in making you more healthy and just feeling better day to day. Today, though, we're going to learn a little bit more about how big of a difference that can mean for astronauts up in space. So right now, why don't we head out to the Payload Operations Integration Center at the Marshall Space Flight Center, where Lori Meggs is there to tell us more. Lori? Astronauts exercise two hours daily to counter muscle and bone loss. Well, a study that was on the International Space Station previously called Treadmill Kinematics has gleaned new information about exercising on the ISS. This is the first time that we've been able to actually do an in-depth evaluation of exercise running styles on the, on the treadmill up in space station, primarily because the second generation treadmill allows us to capture ground reaction forces. The astronauts have been exercising on treadmill since the beginning of ISS, but the earlier treadmill, which was called Tevis, only went up to seven miles an hour and didn't capture any of these ground reaction forces. So the new treadmill that's been in service now for a couple of years allows us to capture the ground reaction forces. And this is really important because the, the ground reaction force is the, basically the force between the foot and the treadmill belt when someone's running. And, and what this does is it quantifies the amount of mechanical load that the astronaut has during exercise, which is bottom line is it tells how effective the exercise is for pr protecting bone and muscle. Uh, in general, you want higher ground reaction forces. If we're on Earth, a lot of times we want to reduce the ground reaction force because they get too high, we start to get stress fractures and those sort of things. But up in space, we want to maximize these because these are the only forces that the astronauts uh, have applied to their body throughout the entire day is, is during their exercise. So we wanted to look and see how the ground reaction forces were different during space flight than on the ground. Because during space flight, you can't run on a treadmill like you would on the ground. If you did, you would just keep bumping your head up into the ceiling of the ISS. So the astronauts wear a harness and they wear a bungee system that pulls them back down. And this bungee loading causes you to have to change the way you run. Um, we hadn't had any data that allowed us to show specifically how there were changes. We just knew there probably were. Uh, so this was the first activity that we did a formal evaluation of how people run and compared running styles in uh, normal gravity to running styles up on the space station. We learned a, a lot of really cool things. Um, first of all, from an exercise perspective, we found out that running fast is really, really important. The faster you run, the greater the force is between the foot and the ground. From a brain perspective, and this is where people who study motor control and how the brain works, and maybe people who are interested in studying how the brain might change due to injury or due to um, uh, aging or these sort of things. What this means is that gravity is not necessary for someone to run the same way that they would run um, on the ground. So the data tell us that when it comes to running, people can pretty much do this automatically, even though that input is different from on the ground. And, there hasn't been any other studies that have been able to study a, a real large scale multi-joint movement like running where you take away gravity to see what the effects are. Um, so this is one of the first that's ever been able to do that. It was kind of a serendipitous finding. Our, our purpose was to understand exercise, but we also found out a little bit about how the body controls running. And speaking of exercise, we know that it is good for the astronauts, but it's also good for us here on Earth. We're getting ready for an event here at the Marshall Space Flight Center that has really close ties to the ISS. It's called Race in the Station. And joining me now is the race director, Kent Criswell. And Kent, tell us, it's, it's a cool name, so tell me what Race in the Station is. Well, Race in the Station is actually a duathlon. And the goal is to finish the course before the space station orbits the Earth. Which is? 91 minutes, 12 seconds. Oh, wow. So uh, your goal is to run, bike, run, and that's the course, run pi kilometers, bike E to the pi power kilometers, which is 23 kilometers, and run pi kilometers again. He's so totally you, lost me. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, E is the logarithmic constant, 2.71, and pi to the pi power. So it's about 1.95 miles. Uh, 14.3 mile bike and 1.95 mile run again. Yeah, so, we're seeing some of the video from last year. It's been been very successful. How, how many years have we done this now? This is the third year. So we started in 2012, uh, had about um, 180 participants. Uh, last year we added a youth event. Uh, we call it an anti-duathlon because it's a bike run bike instead of a run bike run. Uh, so the kids can and bike a little more than run. 
And so we had about 200 last year, and this year we're on track to uh, even beat uh, last year's participation. Why do we do this? So the goal of the race is actually to raise money for scholarships. Uh, Marshall Association um, is, a, is a group of uh, Marshall employees and Redstone employees and uh, other community people that have access to the arsenal, and um, we raise money. Also, turned it more into an outreach as well, to show the amazing things we do here at Redstone. Not just the NASA things with the space station, ECLIS, SLS, um, Mighty Eagle, but also the Army ties we have with the Patriot missile, um, with uh, UAVs. Uh, also Decatur, we're bringing in ULA, who do the Atlas V and the Delta IV, and they're bringing some of their models. So we really try to treat, treat this as an outreach to the community, because half the participants don't even have access to the arsenal. Right. So I'll work their access, they get in, and uh, they see what we, the amazing things we do and, and don't get to normally see. It's all about getting healthy and raising money, and wow, uh, looks like a beautiful day there. You have this when? Late September, so it'll be cooler then and, and a nice run and right. bike day. Right, September 27th, the last Saturday of the fiscal year, 8.30 start, uh, we, we race, and you can register up till the 23rd if you don't have access, and the 25th if you do have access to the arsenal. So. All right, I better get right on that. All I'll right. give it a try. There you go. I may not get far. I may not cross that finish line, but good luck to you. It's a great idea, and we hope other centers get involved too, right? Nobody else does this. No one does it. Uh, Johnson's talked about it. so. We'll All right, there's a challenge. Johnson. Well, that'll do it for us. From the Payload Operations Integration Center here in Huntsville, now back to you at Mission Control in Houston. Thank you to Lori and all the folks out there at Marshall. I'll see if I can rally the troops and get our own race going.